time for Wise Guys Wednesday. Well, a barbecue lighter and an ultrasound are two very different things with an unlikely similarity, and it has all to do with a certain kind of electricity. So U of I physics professor Paul Quiot is going to tell us how they're related. Great to see you all again. Uh, so this week I want to pick up with something uh, that we started last week. So I had put some ethanol in this film canister and made a spark with, with this thing, the spark generator. And so this is the thing I want to talk about today. Uh, you see I'm able to get a spark uh, by pushing this button, assuming the wires aren't too far apart from each other. So in air, if you want to get a spark of about a centimeter, you need something like 30,000 volts. And this is a little less than a centimeter, so maybe it's generating something like 20,000 volts when I uh, push this button. So let's just try and see if we can understand what's actually going on with that. So this is based on a phenomenon that is called piezoelectricity. Uh, that comes uh, from the Greek word uh, piezine, which means to squeeze or to press, and basically uh, what the phenomenon is that for certain materials, if you can squeeze on them, uh, you will generate uh, electric charges, uh, positive and electric charges on the opposite faces of that material, as shown uh, in this little animation. So uh, we could look a little bit more carefully what's happen happening on the uh, atomic level of that. So one of the most common piezoelectric materials is quartz, uh, quartz crystal, and uh, the chemical formula for quartz, silicon dioxide. And it turns out that uh, the silicon tends to be a little bit more positive and the oxygen tends to be a little bit more negative. So the oxygens are more likely to have the electrons in the silicon. Uh, but if I look at the overall crystal as shown here, this is a, sort of an oversimplified representation. Uh, but nevertheless, if we look at, for example, the three silicon atoms here, the net charge is right in the middle. So the net positive charge is right in the middle. And similarly, the net positive charge of all, uh, sorry, the net negative charge of all the oxygens is in exactly the same location. So this sort of normal unstressed quartz crystal uh, will look completely electrically neutral. But now let's ask what happens if we were to press on it from the sides. So in this case, the uh, oxygens are going to slide up a little bit and the silicons are going to slide down. And we see that now we have a net positive charge uh, on the bottom and a net negative charge uh, on the top. So the positive is displaced a little bit below where the negative is. On the other hand, if instead I were to push from the top and the bottom on this, uh, then we can see that the average position of all of these positive charges is a little bit above the center, and the average position of all the negative charges is a little bit below the center. So the point is that if I take one of these crystals and I can push on it in the right way, I can uh, cause there to be uh, charges on the top and the bottom of the crystal, a voltage across them. And as we've seen, that voltage can actually be quite high. It can be about many thousands of volts. Okay, so why should you care? It turns out that you use piezoelectricity uh, probably all the time. Uh, it, it, it's in maybe uh, your wristwatch. Uh, it's also in, for example, a barbecue lighter. So uh, the way that this barbecue lighter works is that uh, when you pull the trigger, you are uh, stretching out the spring and then it releases this plunger and that plunger uh, bangs on a small piezo crystal. That generates a voltage across the sides of that and then there are some wires that come up to the tip of this and by letting out some lighter fluid uh, vapor at the same time, we're then able to uh, ignite that. Okay, so that's one application of that. Uh, as another example, if I were to put my piezo film on a membrane that can flex uh, up and down, for example, yeah, we see that that will either be compressing the piezo or stretching it. And so I'm gonna get alternating positive and negative charges on the top and bottom surface. Uh, and so as I flex this thing, if I were to measure the voltage across my piezo, I'll be able to tell that the thing is flexing. And so that's what happens uh, when sound waves come in uh, to a membrane is it'll start flexing. And this is a way I can detect that flexing. And in fact, uh, these piezos are used, for example, for guitar pickups, uh, some type of uh, guitar pickups. Uh, if we look at uh, somewhat higher frequencies, ultrasonic frequencies, piezos are the central element in an ultrasonic uh, transducer. So I have a bunch of these piezoelectric elements. Uh, I can apply voltages on them, and they will then vibrate, and they will produce uh, ultrasonic waves. Those will uh, bounce off of something, and then they come back. And when they come back to these same elements, they'll cause those elements to vibrate again. And we can, because they're vibrating, they're changing the voltage, and we can pick that up. And with that, we can get an image of whatever the thing is that we're looking at. So uh, speaking of being able to you know, look at amazingly uh, small things hidden 
hidden away. Uh, let me just remind you all that Lab Escape is coming to its final couple weeks here. So if, if that is something you are interested in doing, I highly recommend coming out and uh, checking it out. And in the meantime, I uh, hope you have a great uh, week. Next time we get together, uh, I will maybe talk a little bit about the inverse Zeno effect and all the amazing applications that has uh, for, for science and technology. Okay, have a great week. Bye-bye.